today we're going to be talking about applications of exponential growth and decay. And this is actually applications of what we talked about yesterday with our growth and decay equations. So we can model growth and decay by constant percent of increase or decrease using this equation, where our final amount, little a is our initial amount, Okay, that would be our vertical stretch or compression. And then we have whether it's increasing or decreasing. If it's R, 1 plus R, that's called a growth because you're growing by a rate greater than 1. It's decaying if you have R minus 1. And then you have to the power of T. Our first example. A city population, which was initially 15,500, has been dropping. That's key, dropping. So I'm decreasing by a rate of 3% per year. Write an exponential function and graph the function. Use the graph to predict when the population will drop below 8,000. Okay, so our formula, A of T is equal to A which is our initial amount, 1 minus our rate to the t power. So let's start plugging stuff in. Okay, our a is our initial amount. a is our initial amount, which is 15,500. Then we have 1 minus our rate, which is 3%. Make sure you put your rate as a decimal to the t power. So therefore, the amount we have after a certain amount of time is 15,500 times 0.97 to the t. So that is our exponential function. So this is our exponential function. We're going to graph that. And I wouldn't expect you guys to be able to graph this without a calculator. And we're going to use that graph to determine when the population will drop below 800. So we're going to look at when our population equals 800. Okay. So how we're going to do that, we're going to put our initial exponential function in y1, we're going to put that function in y2 and find their intersection. Section, there we go. Okay, let's talk about what our window should be for this. When t equals 0, or finding your y intercept, if I make t equals 0 here, that whole thing is going to go to 1. So we're going to have a pretty big y intercept. So the window on our y should be something pretty big. Okay, let's jump over to our calculator. So, in y equals, put your equation. And for your variable, use x. Now in Y2, remember we said we were going to put 800, or I'm sorry, 8,000, I apologize, 8,000. Now let's look at our window. I have here a standard window. Let's go from 0 to 10 on the X's. We might need to adjust that. But for your Y's, let's go from 0. Remember we talked about the Y intercept. Let's make that 16, a little bit bigger then what our y-intercept was, so I made it 16,000, and our scale, let's go by 1,000. Now let's press graph and see what our graph looks like. And I've made it over here so that you can see a larger version of what the screen is. Well, I don't have my intersection, so I'm going to have to adjust my x's. So let's look at our window. I'm going to make it 30. That might be a bit extreme, but I'm hoping that's going to get me 
what I need to look for my intersection point. So now I'm going to press graph again. And we do have our intersection point on the screen, so we can find our intersection point. So I go second, calculate, number five is intersect. First curve, I already pressed enter. Second curve, press enter. Guess, since we only have one point of intersection showing on our screen, you can just press enter at this point. Or, if you want, you can go a little bit closer to it. Press enter again. And so it looks like at 21.71 years is when your population is going to be approximately 8,000. So going back to our slide, I would probably say after 21.72 years. Okay. Again, you're not going to be able to do this work without a calculator, so it's imperative that you have a calculator. Next problem. The pressure in the atmosphere is 14.7 pounds per square inch at the Earth's surface. It decreases, so again we have another decay function, by about 20 for each mile of altitude above to about 50 miles. Draw and graph Draw a graph to represent the atmospheric pressure for altitude from 0 to 20. So we need first an expression or an equation. Since we're decreasing, it's a decay function, our initial amount. Okay. When I was first looking at this problem, I was trying to figure out what's our initial amount. It says the pressure of the atmosphere is this amount at the Earth's surface, so that's going to be our initial amount. Then 1 minus our rate, I'm decreasing at 20%, so that's 0 0.2. Remember, your rate has to be a decimal. So therefore, there is your equation. Okay, So draw a graph. Again, putting it in your calculator from 0 to 20 miles, you might put in t equals 0, t equals 5, t equals 10, t equals 15, and t equals 20. So just giving me some different points that we can now graph. So that's an idea of what our graph looks like. Okay, notice it's a decay function. As x is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, our y's are getting smaller. It's never going to go below zero. Our pressure is never going to go below zero. Now, estimate the atmospheric pressure at an altitude of 10 miles. That's when t equals 10. So all I have to do is plug in 10 for t. And when I plug in 10 for T, I get 1.58 pounds per square inch. Okay, so 10, 10 miles above our Earth's surface, this is how small our atmospheric pressure is. Next example, and I find this kind of interesting because it talks about the Internet, something every one of us uses every day. In 2006, there was 1.02 billion people worldwide using the Internet. At that time, the number of users was growing, so we have a growth model, by 14, I'm sorry, by 19.5% annually. Draw a graph showing how the number of users will grow from 2006 to 2016. Okay, so the amount of users after a certain amount of time. And this is just, this is the same equation that I've been using, okay? Is our initial amount 1 plus our rate since we're growing to the t power. 
So the amount we have after a certain amount of time is equal to 1.02 billion 1 plus 0.195 since they give me 19.5 use all your decimal places to the t power and remember this equation is in billions um, so we have 1.195 t now again graph this in your calculator so graph from 2006 so let 2006 be time t equals 0 to 16 okay you could get six data points remind me in class to show you guys how to use the table feature in your calculator to get all of your data points okay so then our graph is going to look something like that so notice how in 2006 we were at 1 billion but 10 years later it looks like we're approximately 6 billion users. I'm recording this in 2015. Looks like we're at about 5 billion users. That's crazy to me at how much our internet has changed. Okay, you guys have one lesson question. Okay, I'm actually going to break it up into two parts. Okay, part A, I want you guys to give me your exponential function okay so on the Google form give me the exponential function and then for part B you're just going to give me a numeric answer and please make sure that is submitted on time